Bumagal ba computer mo? Ay mag boot up? Or hindi ka sigurado sa plano mong upgrade? We have answers right after this answer to the question, what's the best way to activate Windows? This video is brought to you by our sponsor, CDKeyOffer.com. This May, they will be having an anniversary sale for Windows 11 Pro and Windows 10 Pro. To avail, go to their website, click on Windows 11 Pro, and buy now. Use our code HS20 to get a 25% discount. Our sponsor, CDK Offer, is also offering up to 25% discount for Windows 10 Pro activation keys, as well as Office 2016. Use our code HS20 to avail. And then click on Submit Order. Choose your preferred payment method and proceed with the payment. Once payment is complete, click on User Center, and there you can see your code. And once you get your code, go to Windows 11 Activation and enter the code you just got to activate your version of Windows. So if you need safe, legit, and original software, check out cdkeyoffer.com. First question natin tungkol sa Windows and it's asking about a fresh installation. Kung nag-fresh install ka ba ng Windows, regardless kung anong number yan, Windows 7, 10, 11, kung nag-fresh install ka, will you lose your files? Short answer, no, kasi magkahiwala yun. Windows is the operating system, but it's just like any other program. Pag sinasabi mong fresh install, you're just reinstalling that program. So isipin mo, kung nag-reinstall ka ng browser, naapektuhan ba yung files mo ng documents? Naapektuhan ba yung files mo ng photos? Hindi. At a very basic level, Windows is just like any other program. So when you do a fresh install of Windows, your files will not be affected. Kung naka-separate drive yung files, you reinstall Windows on the primary drive. Pagpasok mo ng extra drives mo, your files will be there, Windows will be able to read them, no problem. Pero, iba yung programs. I said before that Windows is just like any other program. That's true. But it's basically the program that runs other programs. Para siya yung boss. It's a program that oversees all the other programs. When you reinstall Windows, nabubura yung memory niya of what programs are installed with it. Kumbaga, sino yung mga programs na mga alagad niya. So for example, sa dati mong install ng Windows, may Photoshop ka, Adobe Premiere, DaVinci Resolve. Lahat yun nakahiwalay sa ibang drive. When you reinstall Windows, basically nabubura yung listahan ng Windows. So even if you have those programs on another drive, fresh install ng Windows, pinasok mo yung bago mong drive, hindi na alam ni Windows na o yung mga programs na to, naka-install pala sa system na to. You can run them in a lot of instances. Papatakbo mo lang yung exe file. But it's not really recommended since nga wala na sila sa registry or yung list of Windows na ito yung mga programs na naka-install. So it's really a bad idea. Fresh install ng Windows, you run a program that wasn't installed on that version of Windows. Iba kasi kung files siya programs, yung files binabasa lang, yung programs, nag interact talaga siya with Windows. So short answer, fresh install of Windows, your files will be fine but not your programs. Always better to do a fresh install of Windows and then a fresh install of programs. Iba yung fresh install of Windows tsaka formatting ng drive. Yung formatting ng drive, basically, dinidelete mo lahat ng contents ng drive na yun. So if you have a primary drive where you keep your OS, tapos sinabi ng technician, sir, format na lang natin. Ibig sabihin nun, hindi lang fresh install ng Windows, buburahin lahat ng contents ng drive na yun. Kung binura lahat, syempre kasama yung files doon. So if you're saying yes to a format, that means you will get a fresh install of Windows kasi nabura na yung lumang version of Windows. But that also means that everything on that drive will be gone, including files. The next two questions are related and we get a lot of them tungkol sa CPUs and GPUs. Yung unang tanong, pwede ba mag-gaming kung walang GPU yung computer mo? The answer is yes. There are some CPUs that have built-in graphics already. You don't need a graphics card. And for some of these CPUs, decente naman yung performance sa gaming. Especially for a lot of the popular games. Dota 2, NBA 2K, Valorant. All of these run well on certain types of CPUs na walang GPU. There are different terms for these CPUs that can run without GPUs. Integrated graphics, iGPU, APU. But not all CPUs are like that. So you do need to check if the CPU that you're considering has onboard graphics. Eh, you know pala, kaya pala mag-gaming without a GPU. Why does everybody spend 10,000 pesos, 20,000, 100,000 plus for the latest 4090? 
kung kaya naman mag-gaming without a GPU. Kasi mas mabilis mag-gaming with a GPU. There are certain graphics features like RTX or ray tracing which you only get with GPUs. Plus, gaming is really, really faster. Mas mabilis talaga yung gaming with a GPU. May mga decenteng APUs nga or CPUs that have onboard graphics. Magandang price to performance yung ibang models. Pero iba talaga yung performance with a standalone GPU. And that's the upgrade path for a lot of people. Magsisimula sila with an APU. For example, a very good APU is from AMD, the Ryzen 5 5600G or the newly released 5600GT. Ganda ng price to performance nun. Not too expensive, but you're getting pretty good performance graphics-wise. Tapos, pag nakaipo na ulit, may budget na ulit, ito yung pangalawang tanong. Can you install a GPU later on into a system that has an APU? And the answer is yes, walang problema yun. Nagsimula ka with a Ryzen 5, 5600G for example, you want to upgrade later on, perhaps to a 4060, 1660 Super, RX 6600, but any kind of GPU you can install into a system with an APU. Walang problema yan, compatible sila. So sa simula, medyo budget, okay naman performance in a lot of popular games with an APU. Pag naka-budget ka na, Bili ka ng GPU, you'll see better performance in those games, and then you can start playing AAA games as well, depending of course on the GPU and the CPU that you have. And speaking of CPU and GPUs, ito talaga yung number one question ng mga tao. Magbibigay sila ng example ng CPU. Halimbawa, AMD Ryzen 5 5600X. Tapos magbibigay sila ng example ng GPU. Halimbawa, RTX 3060. And the question will be, compatible ba tong dalawang parts na to? And may bottleneck ba sila? Good pairing ba sila? Kasi yung CPU and GPU, parang food and wine yan. Supposedly, certain types of food taste better with certain types of wine. So kung red wine, pang steak, white wine, pang pasta, or pang seafood, pang chicken. Or sa atin, mag man ka with people you don't know too much, San Miglite. Kung kasama mo tropa mo, Red Horse. Certain types of alcohol, bagay sa certain types of food, or certain types of situations. Ganun din yung CPU and yung GPU. To answer that, we need to know two things, and that is bottleneck and incompatibility. Any GPU, basically, as long as you can plug it into the PCIe slot, which all motherboards have now, plus you have the proper power connectors, compatible naman yan sa CPU. 99% of the time, hindi issue yung compatibility, Kasi yung pinag-uusapan sa compatibility is tatakbo ba yung computer mo pag install mo tong GPU na to. 99% of the time, tatakbo yung GPU na yan. But what a lot of people are asking when they ask about compatibility is actually bottleneck. Yung number one fear ng karamihan ng mga enthusiasts and kahit yung mga unang nagbe-build ng computer is bottleneck, which I think is overhyped. So ano nga ba yung bottleneck and is it really that bad? Bottleneck just means that yung computer mo may iba't ibang parts. May isang part doon mabagal, so hinihintay siya nung ibang parts sa computer. Usually, yung nagtatrabaho in tandem, especially for gaming, is the CPU and GPU. One example I've used before is like a baton race. Magpapasahan sila nung load. Yung CPU tatakbo, magtatrabaho. Pagtapos na siya, ibibigay niya sa GPU, tapos hihintayin ulit nung CPU yung output ni GPU. Kung mabagal si GPU, naghihintay lang si CPU. Bale, wala lang yung bilis niya kasi hinihintay niya yung isa pang component, yung GPU, na mabagal. Yun yung bottleneck. May naghihintay na isang component kasi mabagal yung other component. Pero bottleneck doesn't mean incompatible. Tatakbo pa rin yung computer mo kahit may bottleneck. And bottleneck happens a lot more often than people think. Marami kasi nag-iisip na yung bottleneck, either or yan. Either may bottleneck or wala. But that's not the case. Depending on the settings, depending on the program that you're running, maari na yung computer mo may bottleneck sa isang game, pagdating naman sa other game, wala namang bottleneck. Hindi siya perpetual state. Pag on mo ng computer mo, kaagad na bottleneck yun. Depende talaga yun. On the program that you're running, on the settings that you're running, on the hardware that you have. And how bottleneck you are can change depending on a lot of factors. So to go back to the question, I have a CPU, I want to figure out ano magandang pairing sa GPU. Isipin mo muna, number one, most likely compatible yan. Hindi issue yung compatibility. Kahit anong GPU ilagay mo dun, most likely compatible siya. Gagana siya. On the second problem, kung bottleneck nga siya, it really depends. 
but it's not that big a deal as a lot of people make it out to be. In fact, for a lot of my personal builds, yung ginagawa ko mas malakas talaga yung GPU compared to yung CPU because that's what games need. A lot of games use the GPU more than the CPU, so okay lang na medyo mabagal relative to the GPU yung CPU. Kasi yung GPU talaga yung magdadala ng gaming performance mo. For a long time, my system was a 3080, so that's a really good GPU even now. Tapos yung CPU ko, Ryzen 7 3700X. Mid-range CPU, but really a bit old, bottleneck yun. Mas malala pa, yung same 3080 na yun, ginamit ko, yan yung graphics card ko. But yung CPU ko, i5 4690K. Sobrang lumang CPU. Bottleneck? Probably. But it allowed me to run AAA games at decent playing FPS on a really old CPU. So my advice is don't worry too much about bottleneck. If you're aiming for the best gaming performance, get the best GPU that you can for your budget. It sounds simple. A lot of people don't like simple. They want to complicate things. Don't complicate your life. Yung tanong mo, do you want to run games or do you want to run benchmarks? Do you want to look at graphics or do you want to obsess about a 2% performance difference at a certain setting in a particular game? If you want to get serious about bottleneck, sobrang nitty gritty yun. Some performance gap, some performance loss is expected. My simple advice to this question is, for gaming, get the best GPU you can and enjoy. And that's what I did personally. The i5 4690K, pinasok ko yung 3080 dun. By conventional wisdom, I'm an idiot. Siguro nga may bottleneck, but I got to enjoy my games. Again, this video is brought to you by our sponsor, cdkeyoffer.com. This May, they will be having an anniversary sale for Windows 11 Pro and Windows 10 Pro, as well as Office 2016. Head on to cdkoffer.com, use our code HS20 to get a 25% discount. Once payment is made, you'll receive the zero key on your account. Use this key on Windows activation on your Windows machine and activate. And just like that, your Windows OS is now activated. Visit cdkoffer.com to avail. Gumawa ka or nagpagawa ka ng computer and the logical question is, what's next? At this point, nabuo na yung computer but it can't run anything. Yung halimbawa natin sa first example, you need a boss program. A program that will tell all of the other programs na, o oh, ikaw muna, o oh, ikaw pwede mo gamitin tong RAM, o ikaw, na-save yung file na yun dito sa storage na to. Your computer needs a boss. Now, there already is a mini boss built into your computer that's the BIOS of your motherboard. May very basic operating system yung motherboard para mapatakbo niya lahat ng hardware. But that's not enough. So the first thing you need to do with a new computer is to install a super boss. That's the OS. That's usually Windows. Windows is relatively straightforward now. Pwede mo i-save muna sa USB and then you install it from the USB. We had an ad earlier saying how you can activate Windows, but you don't need to activate Windows in order for it to run. Pero once na install na yung Windows, hindi pa tapos trabaho mo. Kasi yung super boss na linigay mo sa computer mo, baguhan pa. Kumbaga, fresh out of college pa yan, wala pa yung experience. So first, you need to introduce the new boss to its employees. So in this analogy, yung mga programs. So ilagay mo lahat ng mga programs na usually ginagamit mo. I like to use Ninite, which is installer where you can choose the programs that you install. Isang bagsak na lang. Hindi yung tig-isa-isa which takes a long time. So install the programs that you usually use. Pagkatapos nun, may employees na si Superboss pero kailangan pa niya ng more knowledge. Fresh out of college nga siya. Kailangan niyang experience. And to kind of torture the analogy a little bit, you need to update the drivers. You need to teach the boss new things, new experiences. So that's Windows Auto Update, especially for the major updates. And then the drivers, which teach it how to better manage the hardware assigned to it. And we do have a video on more detailed steps, what to do after you get a new computer. But basically, it's get a boss, introduce that boss to its new employees, and give that boss new information, new knowledge. A lot of gamers now are now streamers. So yung natural na tanong, may gaming PC na ako, sapat na ba yun for streaming? General answer, yes. Streaming doesn't take a lot of resources relative to the other operations of your computer. It doesn't even need to be a gaming PC. If you have a mid-range build or even maybe slightly below that, kaya na mag-streaming alongside gaming. In fact, very few streamers have a dedicated streaming PC. 
a lot of people just use their primary rig both for gaming and for streaming. There are a lot of hardware configurations out there, but generally kung gaming PC gamit mo or yun nga, kahit mid-range, even below mid-range, kaya mag-stream while you're gaming. To reference my old build again, I had an old CPU, i5-4690K with an RTX 3080. Usually yung streaming kasi is more CPU intensive, so medyo kinabahan ako na hindi niya makayanan. I was playing AAA games and then streaming AAA games. Sobrang luma na nung i5-4690K, gagana pa ba yun? Would it have decent enough performance for me to stream well? Yun yung gamit ko na hardware configuration, wala namang problema. So short answer, yes, goods na yun. Itong tanong na to, advanced mag-isip. Kasi nasabi niya, may hardware na ako ngayon, but I'm already thinking about ano yung a-upgrade ko in the future. May papalitan ako sa computer ko, yung gusto ko malaman, okay pa ba yung PSU ko? This is good because you're already thinking about your upgrade path. Maganda na yung computer mo, mas maganda pa siya sa kinabukasan when you upgrade your GPU or your CPU and when you add more RAM. When you get to further improve that computer with new parts. But when you do upgrade, Maganda sana if you only upgrade the parts that you need. So he wants to get a good PSU now para hindi na niya gagalawin in the future. For this particular question, walang problema. Yung 700 watts is more than sufficient for his current configuration as well as for his planned upgrades. Is that true for your computer? Hindi ko masabi because I don't know your PSU, I don't know your current specs, I don't know what specs you want to upgrade to in the future. Pero yung pinaka-basic na information na hinahanap mo sa PSU is yung capacity or how much power it can give your computer. The watt capacity and in general for mid-range to even high-end builds, sapat na sapat na yung 650 watts to 750 watts. Yung general range ng PSUs can be around 450 watts, then 500, 550, 600, 650, 700, 750, 850, 1000, up to around 1200 watts. Pero realistically, pag lumampas ka na sa 850 watts, medyo pang siraulong enthusiasts lang yan. Yung mahilig magsunog ng pera, 95 to 90% of builds don't need anything beyond 750 watts. And I know this from painful experience. Dati, kinakabahan pa ako makapusan or makulangan ng kuryente na galing sa PSU. So I would get high wattage PSUs, mga 850 watts, naka 1000 watts pa nga ako. Sayang lang pera ko. Hindi ko naman nagagamit yung extra watt capacity ng PSU. And your personal PC strategy ko is to buy medyo high-end, tapos okay na yun. Di ko na siya gagalawin for the next 4 to 5 years. So my PSU had to power relatively high-end components, but even for that, overkill yung 850 watts. So currently, my current system is a Ryzen 9 5900X with an RTX 3080. Medyo high-end components. Yung PSU ko, 750 watts, no problem at all. So the sweet spot for mid-range to even high-end builds is around 650 to 750 watts. But yung watt capacity ng PSU is just the tip of the iceberg. You also want to consider brand and the efficiency rating. In general, there are certain brands that are more reliable than others, especially for PSUs. Now, a lot of people like to go overboard in the research. May mga PSU cult tier list. Again, just like bottleneck, I feel that that's an obsession with the hardware that maybe it's not healthy anymore. A little knowledge is good, but going overboard can also be bad. So to keep things at a beginner-friendly, usable level of information, there are some PSU brands that we like over others and that's based on personal experience as well as yung experience namin sa shop. We have sold thousands of PSUs, the RMA breakdown of which we've shared in another video. So masasabi talaga namin, not just based on one model or having small batches of one brand, but really over the years, yung experience namin sa mga brands, sino yung mga reliable na PSU brands. So these are actually the brands that we like to recommend Yung mas mura, pero kasing reliable ng mga top tier brands like Corsair or Seasonic. And those brands are FSP, Deepcool. The recent Hunky PSU that we've tried is actually doing well, although we're still testing it more before we maybe want to carry it in the shop. Superflower, relatively unknown brand, pero sila actually gumagawa ng maraming PSUs for a lot of the other brands. So, no need to get top tier for PSUs. There are a lot of PSU manufacturers that are just as reliable for cheaper. So two basic points of information, the PSU capacity, how many watts it can give your computer. Number two, the brand, 
And lastly, number three, yung efficiency rating. That's usually measured in the 80 plus rating or ngayon may bagong rating from a competing company, the Cybernetics rating. Regardless of which rating system you're using, yung sinusukat lang nun is the efficiency. How much power your PSU draws from the outlet versus how much it can give to your system. Pero naging stand-in na for the general quality of the PSU, yung mataas na rating. Based on the logic that if a PSU is more efficient, then it probably has better components, then it will probably last longer. Personally, I like getting 80 plus gold. Anything beyond that, yung platinum, titanium, it's just added cost. I'm happy with the efficiency level of 80 plus gold. But even 80 plus bronze, the one below gold, is already okay for a lot of systems. We very rarely recommend yung pinaka lowest color of the 80 plus rating, which is 80 plus white. At least man lang bronze. And for me personally, I like 80 plus gold. So actionable information, the first thing you'd look at is the watt capacity. Hindi ko masabi sayo if your current PSU is good for your current configuration and for the hardware that you're planning to upgrade since I don't know that information. But rule of thumb in general, 650 watts to 750 watts, 80 plus bronze or 80 plus gold is already sufficient for a wide variety of systems. And that includes possible upgrades later on in the future. So yun yung six pinaka common na tinatanong sa amin tungkol sa mga tech questions, PC questions. But if you have other questions or yung thing kasi sa computer, the details, the context really matters. Kakabanggit ko lang na usually 650 watts, 750 watts, okay na yun. But of course, there are components that will need higher. Kakasabi ko lang na bottleneck is okay. But of course, you don't want too much bottleneck. Again, ang daming mga possible configurations. Context matters. What are you gonna use the PC for? What hardware do you have? What hardware are you planning to upgrade to? You can keep asking those questions in the comments. We try to reply as much as possible. But we do have a live stream every month, usually the first Friday of every month, pwede magtanong where we take your tech questions live. And if you have questions, you might want to ask there also. Thanks for watching.